I'm pleased to be joined by Philadelphia Stars quarterback Case Cookis. Case, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you taking time to do this. And I know that you are getting ready to play in the inaugural USFL championship game, Canton, Ohio, at Tom Benson Pro Football Hall of Fame Stadium. But I want to take it back a few years to Northern Arizona and ask quite simply, how did you get from Thousand Oaks, California to Northern Arizona? Yeah, um, it's kind of a weird, weird long story, but, you know, the shorter version of it, you know, I ended up uh, not being highly recruited out of high school, um, was a little undersized, played wide receiver actually my junior year of high school, so didn't have a lot of film to send out. Um, ended up going to a junior college, Ventura Community College, um, and gray shirted there, which was one of the best decisions I ever made because in that year I grew probably another, you know, inch and a half, two inches, put on some weight, you know, and at my senior high school is maybe, you know, buck 70. So, you know, it kind of put on some weight and, and started to really, you know, fit into my body a little bit and had some interest from some from Pac-12 schools and things like that. But without even having to play, I had an offer from NAU. Um, and I felt like I had a good connection with the coach, um, uh, Coach Plow at the time. And uh, I decided to, to commit to NAU. And I think it was two, three weeks later in that whole time of going to camp, going to a camp and getting recruited. And the next thing you know, I'm in the middle of football camp at NAU trying to fight for the starting job. <laughs> well, you fought and you won. I mean, let's not be simple about it. Let's, let's put it right there. <laughs> you won the Jerry Weiss Award, which is for the best freshman in FCS in a year going for over 3,000 yards, passing 37 TDs that year. What was it about the program that clicked for you and seemingly right away? Yeah, uh, so Coach Plow was his first uh, season as offense coordinator there, and they were making a transition from more of a pro-style two-back set with two tight ends maybe even um, to more of a spread offense. But a spread offense with pro concepts at more of a, a little bit of more of an up-tempo pace. We'd still huddle and, and get together, run some wing sets and run some, you know, play action, run the ball with a couple tight ends. But um, we really wanted to, to spread it out. And what we were able to do – with a lot of seniors around me is we had a really good wide receiver and Emmanuel Butler there on the outside. We had a really good uh, running back and O-line that were, were seen, seniors, veteran guys. And so for me at quarterback, walking into that situation was, was awesome because they all knew what they had to do. I didn't have to coach anyone up. So everyone knew exactly what to do. And, you know, we had so many playmakers on that team. Um, you know, and I was fortunate enough to win the Jerry Rice Award um, one of the greatest achievements of my life. I was so, so thankful. And uh, just to be even mentioned the same sentence as Jerry Rice is, is an awesome accomplishment for me. It sounds as if you had a lot of the pieces in place at NAU that you do with the Philadelphia Stars, a, a scheme that's wide open that gives you more control and also a bunch of players that already know what they are doing. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, so I think um, Coach Bart, just getting back to that, it was – he does a great job of making, you know, a complex offense very simple for the guys. So you can come in and, and execute his offense just in a short week's notice. You know, KJ came in last week and was able to move the ball down the field very quickly for us um, when I was out for that series too. So, um, you know, coach starting with there with Coach Bart, and then you get into our playmakers at wide receiver, tight end, running back. It's amazing how many playmakers we have. Um, and it's awesome to see them work. So my job at quarterback is really easy because I'm just trying to get them the ball as quickly as I can. That is the X's and O's of what you are doing. That is you being a quarterback, reading the field, and getting the ball out to your playmakers. But one of the aspects of your game that I think is very interesting and quite literally entertaining is your fiery personality. And the way <laughs> I want to get at this is there's a story about you back at NAU in Big Sky Conference playing against Montana. <laughs> and you picked up a targeting call and an ejection as a quarterback. And as I understand it, you are the first quarterback to ever be ejected for targeting. Can you tell us that story? Yeah, that was uh, it's a crazy story. It's funny now. It wasn't so funny when it happened. But uh, I was pretty fired up when it happened. But, um, yeah, so basically it was, a, it was a trick play for anyone that hasn't seen it. And I was supposed to get the ball. Uh, we kind of tossed it to our big tight end who has a big arm. And they kind of snuffed up the play, and um, he started to, to run out there to the right, and I peeled back and threw a block, and 
me not really knowing how to block, I just kind of threw it up there and um, ended up kind of getting in his his head, you know, an area. And, it, and the guy was fine, 100% fine, got popped back up and everything. That's obviously the first thing. But uh, initially, I thought it was for, like, taunting or things like that. And then they saw it. They said targeting. And I, I was shocked. And, you know, they threw me out. And, uh, you know, the fans were throwing – you know, beers and snowballs and everything at me. Oh, it was, it's, you know, Montana is a tough place to play at. So uh, definitely a story and a funny story I can tell you for the rest of my life. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate you telling that story. Also, I appreciate a quarterback that's willing to throw his shoulder into some things. And, and this is part of your story that I find fascinating. We'll get back to, but I also want to jump ahead. You did some time in the NFL, the Giants, the Broncos, the Vikings, and the Raiders. First, did I forget anybody, and what have you taken from your limited time in the NFL as a pro? No, I think that was it. I had a little stint there with uh, uh, Edmonton Elks up in Canada after I got cut from the Raiders. Um, but I, I learned so much. Each place I go, um, there's so many good quarterbacks and coaches that I've met um, and other players around the league. You know, I think um, coming out the year I did, the COVID year, not having a pro day, not having this and that. So it was hard for me to learn how to be a pro over Zoom. You know, you kind of, you know, when you go to those mini camps, you're around other rookies and you kind of get to learn together. Um, and when you're doing it over Zoom, you kind of have to take your lumps and um, you don't really, you know, you, sometimes you can't tell what you're doing wrong because just because it's over a computer or you can't make the mistakes on the field and then go back and correct them in the room and then come back and make them and fix them out on the field. So. Um, you know, I had a lot of learning to do in that aspect and bouncing around the way I've done. I feel like my career, especially now since I've got to USFL, has been heading in the right direction. You know, I had a small stand with the Giants, made a couple of impressions the next year on, you know, Broncos, Vikings, Raiders. And now I was able to play and get some film here in the USFL. And, uh, you know, we're playing for a championship, which is an awesome opportunity. It didn't always feel like it was going to go this way for you. Uh, like, let's be plain about it. Brian Scott was a starter. He got hurt. You come in, and you do a great job. But I also think you played one of the better games of anybody in the USFL, June 5th, 46-28 win against the Michigan Panthers. Is that when the team felt like it was yours to command, or did you feel that way even weeks before? Yeah, I think, um, you know, going back to the offense, I feel like, um, you know, it was never anyone's team itself. You know, we, Coach Bard, again, has set it up um, so nice for anyone to step in and be able to execute um, at really any position. You know, we, not to say our guys are interchangeable because we have some really, truly special guys, but um, what we want to do as offense is keep it simple, get the ball out into those those playmakers' hands. And, you know, you know, yes, it was kind of clicking all together on that Michigan game. But, uh, you know, even at that Michigan, there was, there's three or four throws and three or four maybe decisions that I still wanted back. So still wanting that almost perfect game. I know that's, you know, I think quarterbacks are always striving to get better and better and better, get the higher completion percentage. And, you know, we'd all love to go, you know, 20 for 20 with five touchdowns. But, you know, that's what we're achieving. And if we slightly miss, we have, a, you know, a great game. So. Um, you know, just got to keep working at it. Like I, I keep bringing Coach Bart up, but he does a great job of setting us up for success. Well, don't be too hard on yourself. I mean, we're talking about <laughs> you said three or four you want back. You were 20 and 26, Doc, for like 250. <laughs> so, like, let's calm, pump the brakes on that. But also in that game, we got to see – you're talking about playing wide receiver in high school a little <laughs> bit. You got some wheels, and you've been trying to downplay it all year. <laughs> I want to know, like, why are you trying to downplay your ability to move in the pocket? Yeah, well <laughs> – I guess, you know, it's, it's something, uh, you know, I try not to break it out um, too often. I, like I said, I really trust our guys on the outside of winning, but, you know, sometimes, you know, there's, there's a, first off, a lot of good competition in this league. And, you know, when, you know, the defense is, is playing a lot of two man or things like that, you have to show that you can run to then suck them back up and be able to hit them up top. So, uh, you know, I got on that one, the, the touchdown run, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I got out there, but honestly, there's only a couple of guys to beat. So it's not like I made, you know, three or four guys miss. But, um, yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's important to show the defense that that you can, you know, extend the pocket and make some of those plays because it just it gives them something else to worry about for sure. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos 
on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.